this is going to be a really quick look at SAS University Edition. You should have already downloaded VirtualBox and downloaded the OVA file from SAS. I'm going to open up my VirtualBox here. VirtualBox is just uh, running a, another software, another operating system in your operating system. I've got uh, the OVA SAS file open here, and I'm just going to click Start. This will usually say Start, but in this case, I'll click Show. This will open up my virtual machine here. After a blue loading screen, you'll see this window. And I'm told by SAS that I need to go to my browser and type in this URL right there. So I'm going to go to my browser, in this case Chrome. I'll type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost, and then I'll click Enter. That'll take me to this window here. Uh, I'll click Start SAS Studio, and that will take me to SAS Studio, which you can see here. This is what SAS looks like. Uh, it has three sort of windows here. Uh, the first is the coding window, where we write the code. Uh, the log window, that tells us information about how our code was run. Um, here's some an example of what that looks like, and the results window, which sometimes, uh, on certain occasions, will show us interesting results from the code. So, what I'm going to show you is a really, really simple data set. So, to make a data set, we simply type in data, and I'm going to call my data set our time for reaction time. I put a semicolon at the end, which is what you always do in SAS. Always remember the semicolon. Next, I'm going to input variables. So, I'm going to Type in input as the key term, and I'm going to just name my variables with spaces. So my first name variable is going to be name. It doesn't have to be all caps, but in this case, I just decided it to be that way. And because name is going to be a character variable, it's going to include letters as opposed to numbers. I'm going to put in a dollar sign. Next, I have uh, the color, which is just the color of the target in this particular scenario. Uh, and it's also going to be green or red, so it also has a dollar sign. And finally, my last variable is our time, the reaction time, which is going to be a number, so I don't need the dollar sign, and I click semicolon. Okay, now I needed to put in the, the actual observation. So I type in data lines, semicolon, and I input my information. So in this case, I have Paul as my first individual. So here's the name. I put a space that I put in the color that of targets Paul played. He played with green targets, and his reaction time was 243. And then I'll go in and put in the rest of them. So I have Ringo, he played red, 263. I have John, he played green, and he reacted in 273 milliseconds. And finally, I have George, who played with red targets, and he reacted in 232 milliseconds. And then I'll type in run, semicolon, and that is it basically it. It's a very short code, and I'll run this code by highlighting it and clicking clicking the little running man. Here it goes, it ran. Everything went well, I didn't see any errors, I didn't see any warnings, I saw two notes. So I look through and everything looks good. I can, you can read this, I have four observations and three variables. Okay, so now the question is, where is this data set saved? So if I look in my folders, uh, it's, I don't see anything here. My folders is a way to connect to my computer. But if I go to my libraries where data sets are saved, I can see there's a library here called work. And work is a temporary library that always exists in SAS. And what it does is it it is temporary and it stores anything you have, but it only stores it for as long as your window is open. So here I, I have our time, the, the data set I created. And here we have name, color, our time, Paul, Rango, John, and George but I want to save this file long term. So I need to add one simple uh, line of code that I have to do in University Edition. And that line looks like this. So I type in libname. So I'm going to create a library. I'm going to call that library vic1. And that I need a path for that library. The path will be folders slash folders slash my folders. Close bracket. And let me just try running that, little running man. And that looks good. So I, I created the libref of vic1, the library vic1. And you can see here on the left, I have created vic1 as a library. OK, so now I need to go back to my code. And here's my data. There's where I define data our time. In this case, I'm going to define it as data vic one our time. So this tells SAS to store our time, the data set, into vic1. And I'm just going to run this again. 
And now I need to write, run the lib name statement again. I click run. I see only notes, no warnings, no errors. I see again, four individuals, three observations. And under the Vic1 tab, I'm seeing our time. Okay, here's the interesting thing. Because I defined Vic1, the library, uh, to be located in folders, my folders, this is a default state, state for, for SAS. When I saved our time, I actually saved it to the folder I defined here. So on my computer, I have a file SAS University edition. Inside of it is on my folders. If you don't understand what's going on here, please take a look at the document. And here I've got our time dot sas 7 b dat that's just an extension of a typical sas data set and this is the data set i just created and what's cool is that the data sets you create in sas will be saved here on your computer so you can upload them to another computer or send them by email but also any data sets that you get externally you can bring them into this folder and open them in sas which is great okay so that's awesome uh, we've saved a data set but what about the program that we created so we created this program here and imagine you've got a really long program and you want to save it because you don't want to keep writing this out every time. So we can do that. Uh, here's a little save, save button. I click save. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. I'm going to save it to my folders. That's the shared folder. And then I'll call it uh, program number one. I guess we'll call, leave it there. It's dot sass because that's what you call sass programs as opposed to sass data sets. And I'll click save. And then when you go back to that folder on your computer, you'll see in my folders, there it is, program number one.sass. So this is this tutorial was really supposed to show you how it's really convenient to move between the SAS university setting and uh, the folders on your computer. So good luck with that and enjoy programming in SAS.